The Layer 2 scaling wars in the Ethereum space are starting to heat up like crazy. There's a gold rush to become a market leader to capture market share and get a lot of people using your particular scaling solution. We've seen projects like Arbitrum Optimism come onto the scene for general purpose blockchain scaling. And we have another contender that I want to talk about today that's starting to gain traction very quickly. I'm going to talk about who this is and what you need to understand why this is such a big deal because you're definitely going to keep want to keep your eye on this for the long term all right so i'm gonna talk about that as a blockchain developer who works this technology on a daily basis so before we get into that you know if you're new around here hey i'm gregory and on this channel i turn you into a blockchain master so if that's something that you're interested in then smash that like button down below for the youtube algorithm and subscribe to this channel and if you want to learn how to master blockchain step by step start to finish then head on over to dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp to get started today all right, so let's jump into this. Let's talk about this layer two scaling solution for Ethereum that's starting to gain traction really quickly. Okay, so the reason I'm making this video is because I just saw the announcement come out recently about Unisync, which is a port of Uniswap version two on the uh, ZK AVM. All right, so let me help you decode that headline and understand why this is important. Okay, so this is a post by Matter Labs, who is the creator of ZK Sync, all right, which is a, a Ethereum scaling solution for Ethereum 2.0. And they've just launched uh, a version of Uniswap version 2, which is just a Solidity application that runs on layer 1 Ethereum that can now be ported over to ZK Sync 2.0 with their Solidity compiler. Now, I know that's still a lot of technical jargon inside of that. If you're like already a blockchain developer, you might have just caught that and said like, oh, wow, that's amazing. But if not, you know, for whatever reason, let me break this down and connect the dots so that you can see why this is such a massive deal for the long term. So let's start off first and foremost with like what layer two scaling solutions are in the first place. So one of the biggest complaints about Ethereum is it's too slow, it's too expensive to use. Uh, whenever we move to Ethereum 2.0, it's not going to fix that problem entirely. Okay, so the long-term vision of the Ethereum ecosystem is to build Ethereum in multiple layers. Have base layer Ethereum layer 1 be the blockchain that everybody knows and uses today, and then eventually move that to Ethereum 2.0. But even right now, while we're using Ethereum, basically create this second environment called a layer 2, where uh, you can perform a majority of the transactions in a separate environment and then uh, batch up the result of those transactions and put them back on layer one blockchain. That's called a roll-up based technology, a roll-up scaling solution. So we've seen um, you know, projects like Optimism and Arbitrum really gain a lot of traction. Uh, because these are general purpose scaling solutions, meaning developers can build whatever applications they want to and put them on these uh, scaling solutions and started getting users now, as opposed to application specific um, you know, scaling solutions like DYDX, which is a ZK rollup, Loopring, et cetera, et cetera. All right. So Arbitrum and Optimism are both optimistic rollups based technologies. We're going to talk about specifically what that means in this minute and how it compares and contrasts to other things. But the, the other player that we're going to focus on this video that's really gaining traction is ZK Sync, okay? And how they're different and how I think they're a, a big game changer long term, okay? So ZK Sync is different from Arbitrum and Optimism because it's a zero knowledge based scaling solution. And with ZK Sync 2.0, it's a new and improved version of this technology. And so let's talk about the difference between some of those things. Okay, so I've got a chart pulled up that uh, kind of compares and contrasts uh, these solutions. And so you can see that there um, are lots of different solutions on here, state channels, side chains, plasma, optimistic rollups, validium and ZK rollups. But the two I want to focus on are optimistic rollups and ZK rollups because these are the ones that are gaining traction and this is where I think, you know, we're going to see a strong preference long term. And I think ZK Sync is a huge, uh, you know, contender in this particular arena. So let's start with optimistic rollups. So basically, this is the scaling system that's, that's getting traction very quickly already. Um, one of the reasons is there's almost no friction for applications to move over to this environment. Basically, you can take a, a, a version of the, it has its own version of the Ethereum virtual machine in, in some cases. And even if that's not completely true, then basically the benefit is you can take your Solidity smart contracts and move them over to their processing environment. Okay, so basically the benefit here is developers don't have to really make code changes. And what I mean by that is they don't have to like rewrite their app from scratch in order to put their application on this. So you're going to see like, you know, forks happen. You're going to see people take versions of their application and just migrate them or expand to this environment. And that takes almost no effort on the grand scheme of things. All right, you can see s some huge performance benefits. Uh, transaction throughput on ETH 1.0 is significantly higher. Uh, throughput on ETH 2.0 is even way higher, okay? But there are some downside 
uh, risks here. Not, not downside risk, but downside trade-offs, okay? So uh, withdrawal times on optimistic roll-ups uh, take about a week, okay? And so for a lot of people, this is a kind of a deal breaker. There are ways to circumvent this, but it adds a level of trust into the equation. And also the client side verification of subjective finality does not have that either, okay? And part of this is because optimistic rollups do have some sense of trust involved. Um, you can, uh, d turn actions can be disputed after the fact, and that's one of the reasons you have this, you know, seven day withdrawal time and the lack of this client side verification of subjective finality. Now, contra contrast that to ZK rollups, okay, which um, do have, like, they, it fixes this problem, okay? So basically, you have uh, the same benefits and even more enhanced benefits in some cases, but you have a withdrawal time of maybe one to 10 minutes, which is about what you'd expect if you're interacting with like a centralized exchange, for example. And the client side verification of subjective finality, you do have that with ZK Sync. So let's talk about why. All right, so the reason that ZK Sync is able to provide these benefits is because it uses uh, something underneath the hood called, you know, zero knowledge proofs that's the that's what zero knowledge roll-ups are built off of so let's let's talk about what zero knowledge proofs are because they can apply to lots of different aspects of cryptography blockchain technology so let's just talk about fundamentally what a zero knowledge proof is i'll give you a couple of examples so that you can kind of understand how it works so the whole idea is that you can prove information without revealing the information itself that's that's the essence of what a zero knowledge proof is so let me give you an example so one one common example that i hear a lot is like a uh, where's Waldo picture. So somebody asks you to find Waldo, prove that you found Waldo in this uh, picture, but you don't necessarily want to reveal Waldo's location. Well, if you found Waldo, you look on this picture, and let me see if I can find him. Uh, so I, th I think this is him right here. Uh, it's kind of hard to tell my monitor, but let's just say this is Waldo, okay? So what I could do is I could draw a box around Waldo and then black out the rest of the picture and then send you back a picture of the Waldo that I found, but I don't actually reveal his location. That, so that would be a zero knowledge proof that I actually did find Waldo, but I never revealed his location. Uh, that That's the whole idea. So another example, um, let's talk about, you know, privacy and, and user information. So if I got a website like this, um, you know, this is a uh, uh, website for the Macallan, you know, they're, they're a scotch company. So the whole idea is a wine and spirits website, and they want to prove that you're a legal drinking age in your country before they'll let you access their website. Okay, so it's kind of silly, like I can just lie about what my age is if I really wanted to. Uh, and confirm and continue. But what if you need to make this more airtight? Okay, you could do this with zero knowledge proofs where you could reveal your age without revealing what your age is. So basically, if you had some sort of digital identity that was tied to your uh, blockchain wallet that knew it, information about your age, this website could have you sign something that gets that information and then you could prove that you were over the legal drinking age but not actually tell you what your actual age is. That's a zero knowledge proof. Proof that you meet the criteria but not what the information is that actually satisfies that criteria. Those are a couple applications of zero knowledge proofs. So how does that apply to blockchain scaling? All right, that, that's a completely different thing. So what is it? Well, the whole idea behind a zero knowledge proof is the amount of data that it actually takes to make something work. So the application of blockchain scaling is proving that transactions are valid with hardly any data compared to what a full transaction is, okay? So basically when you create a blockchain transaction, it's, it's a lot of data uh, on layer one and there's a lot of security involved but if you reduce the footprint of each individual transaction, you can scale a lot more. You can fit more in there and all you have to do is prove that that transaction is valid, okay? So that's, that's the whole idea. So zero knowledge rollups bundle or roll up hundreds of transfers on chain and generate cryptographic, a cryptographic proof known as a snark, a succinct non-interactive argument of knowledge. Uh, this is known as a validity proof and is posted on layer one. So that's why it scales. You can get those proofs and stick them on layer one. And that's a lot smaller than all this transaction data. And that represents a lot of different transactions rather than one individual transaction. So the ZK Rollup smart contract maintains the state of all transfers on layer two. And the state can only be updated with the validity proof. This means that ZK Rollups only need the validity proof instead of all transaction data. It reduces the footprint. That's exactly what I'm talking about. With a ZK rollup, uh, validating a block is quicker and cheaper because less data is included. So the other benefits with a ZK rollup, there are no delays on moving funds from layer two to layer one because a validity proof accepted by the ZK rollup contract has already verified the funds. So you verify everything with math uh, and cryptography. You don't have to trust in any kind of like, you know, validator or relayer or anything like that. And you, you don't have to worry about that withdrawal period. And so you can see those pros and cons listed here, faster finality, 
Um, no vulnerable economic attacks, secure decentralized since the data is needed to recover the state. It's stored on layer one chain. So there are cons. Um, and one of the biggest ones I'm going to talk about here is some don't have EVM support, but enter into ZK Sync uh, 2.0. And this is one of the reasons I'm so excited about it is because zero knowledge proofs, in my opinion, are one of the best forms of layer two scaling solution that we'll have for the long term and maybe might be the prevailing paradigm that we use long term. But um one of the cons is some of the implementations, as we see here, don't actually support Solidity compilers, all right? So if you wanted to uh, move your app over to it, there's all this friction of having to modify your app or even rewrite it from scratch in some of the language to support some sort of zero-knowledge scaling solution. But one of the things that's so incredible about ZK Sync 2.0 is that you can act, it has it has a solidity compiler so you could just take your existing applications and move them over uh without all this friction and get these benefits that we're talking about okay so that brings us up to the post where we are today and why this is such a big deal kind of coming back full circle so unique sync is a port of uh uniswap version 2 on the zk evm and you know that that's why this is such a big deal. Basically, since our announcement of the first version of zk sync 2.0 on testnet, the Solidity compiler has reached a robust state. And we have finished the development of the Web3 API and additional L2 specific functionality. So we are tremendously excited to present a fully functional DAP with Solidity smart contracts and a Web3 front end. So you can try it out now by using this link, and you can see it's a Solidity first approach maintains composability for DeFi, low effort to move your app apps over like I was talking about and so much more. All right, so that's an overview why this is such a big deal. Again, this is, um, you know, in testnet, if you want to go try it out, you can actually launch the application here. Okay, you can connect to it like Uniswap, you can put out a tweet, you can connect your wallet, put out a tweet to retest, you know, request some tokens, and actually try out the Uniswap exchange on version two to see it, you know, for yourself and actually look at the ZK Sync block explorer um, to see all the transactions that it's uh, verifying. All right, so that's all I got for today. As always, smash that like button down below for the YouTube algorithm. Subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. That really helps these videos out so that more people can learn about blockchain. And if you're as fascinated with this technology as I am, you want to get your hands dirty, how can you get started today? Well, you go to my YouTube homepage. You can find any of my free courses there. They're like Udemy courses, but they're totally free. And if you like those and you want to take the next step, or hey, maybe you want to take a master shortcut entirely, I can show you how to become a blockchain master step-by-step -step start to finish over at dappuniversity.com forward slash bootcamp. You don't have to be an expert to get started today. I've helped people with zero coding experience become real-world blockchain developers in a matter of months. So that's all I've got. And until next time, thanks for watching Dapp University.